Jalen Brock has a message that he'd like to share. How you feeling, BlizzCon? Before we start the opening ceremony, I want to say a few words. You know, uh, Blizzard had the opportunity to bring the world together in a tough Hearthstone esports moment about a month ago, and we did not. We moved too quickly in our decision making, and then, to make matters worse, we were too slow to talk with all of you. When I think about what I'm most unhappy about, there's really two things. The first one is we didn't live up to the high standards that we really set for ourselves. And the second is we failed in our purpose. And for that, I am sorry, and I accept accountability. So what exactly? So what exactly is our purpose? BlizzCon is demonstrating it even as we speak. We aspire to bring the world together in epic entertainment. And I truly believe in the positive power of video games. When we get it right, we create a common ground where the community comes together to compete, connect, and play, irrespective of the things that divide us. As an example, BlizzCon has people from 59 countries all around the world here at the show today. That is amazing. And that is the positive power of video games to transcend divisions that surround us in so many of our places today. We will do better going forward. But our actions are going to matter more than any of these words. As you walk around this weekend, I hope it's clear how committed we are to everyone's right to express themselves in all kinds of ways, in all kinds of places. I've actually seen and heard Many of you expressing yourself this morning. <laughs> you use your vacation and your family time to be here in Anaheim with us, and we are so grateful that you're here this weekend. Our best moments are here in our shared passion for Blizzard games. So once again, BlizzCon has brought us together, and today you're going to see a lot of the hard work of the Blizzard team. I am personally, I am personally so proud of what we are building, and I hope you love it too. Thank you for joining us. So, are you ready to start the countdown? Let's do it.
divine wisdom guides me. Though my path is wrought with darkness, guide myself to thy sacred light. Blessed I grant, thy eternal light protects me. Thy divine wisdom guides me. Quiet. Though my path is wrought with darkness. Shut up. Run! Cheer up. Gold splits better three ways instead of four. It must be hidden here somewhere. Read this. Oh. By three they come, by three thy way opens, by the blood of them. Willing. Hail, hail the cre the creator. Oh, hail the daughter of. Oh no, 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 no. What about the coin? What's it say? This is forbidden. This is a summoning. I cannot speak. This Don't time. lie to me. We came here for treasure. What is this place? I I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's a temple. Or, or two or more.
Blessed I cried. The eternal life protects me. The divine wisdom guides me. Through my path and the path. Guide my soul to thy sacred place. There is no light here. You came to the darkness for knowledge. <sighs> yes. And all the knowledge you seek is here. Surrender. Speak the words. Call her home. By three, they come. By three, thy way opens. By the blood of the willing, we call thee home. Please welcome game director of Diablo, Luis Barriga. Good morning, BlizzCon. It is so very good to be here. I want to thank all of you for coming and a big thank you to Blizzard Cinematics for starting things off the right way this weekend. I know you all want to hear about the game, so let's get to it. Diablo 4 is darkness, world, and legacy. Let's start with darkness. Diablo 4 is dark. You just saw the cinematic, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Whether it's the art, the story, or the horror elements that we've embraced, the first thing you will notice about Diablo 4 is that we are going back to the franchise's darker roots. It'll mean blood and gore. It'll mean occult symbols and rituals. 
More importantly, it will mean victories are neither clean nor guaranteed. We hope you're as excited about that as we are. Then we have World, also super important for Diablo 4, because we've only seen glimpses into Sanctuary in previous Diablo games. But those gl glimpses have enthralled us and captured our imaginations. With Diablo 4, we want to put the World of Sanctuary front and center. We want every character, every monster, every faction to have a sense of place. Drowned undead that emerge from the coastlines. Brutal goat men that come from the hills above us. And as we go deeper and deeper into the depths below, a truly dark, gothic, and medieval version of hell. The world is also how you'll experience most of our game. It is there that you will find enemy camps and friendly towns alike. It is also where you'll find players to interact with, whether it's to trade with them, group with them, or should you choose to do so, murder each other in PvP zones. <laughs> Finally, legacy. Whether it's the sense of dread from Diablo 1, or the classic class lineup and loot chase that we still are inspired by from Diablo 2, or the best in class visceral and fluid combat to, from Diablo 3 that we still enjoy, we are approaching this series with complete reverence and we hope that it shows. If you are new to the series, we want you to feel like we did when we first played Diablo. If you're a longtime fan, we think this is the game you've been waiting for. Isometric action RPG developed for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. On that note, on that note, we want to offer you a first glance at Diablo 4, along with our first three classes. The Barbarian, the Sorceress, and the Druid. On behalf of everyone on the Diablo 4 team, it is our absolute pleasure now to share with you the world premiere of the Diablo 4 gameplay trailer. The dream continues to haunt me, old friend. It always starts with a journey to a distant land. There I find a city in flames. Streets choked with corpses. Unthinkable destruction. I witness senseless slaughter. Brother against brother. Pure hatred. And then, executions. Agony. Suffering surrounded me until my turn comes. They burn my eyes. Break my bones. I awaken in terror. There's no one left to stand against them.
dreams. They tell of the future. Hell is coming, brother. Hell is coming. All right. How'd you guys like that first look? We have a super exciting next couple days ahead of us. We have panels where we're gonna go deeper into the features, the systems, the world, the art of Diablo 4, starting with an unveil panel right after opening ceremony on this stage. But that's not all. The team's been working super hard on the game, and therefore we've been able to bring a little bit of that, a little taste for that. That's right, we have a very early look, a demo, playable, on the floor today, right now. We hope you have as much fun playing it as we did making it. And once again, on behalf of the game team, thank you all and see you in hell. Please welcome game director of World of Warcraft, Ian Hazakostis. Where are you? <laughs> Alliance! Let me hear you! <laughs> Protoss! Terran! Zerg! <laughs> Heroes of the Storm! <laughs> Legends of the Tavern! <laughs> Heroes of Overwatch! <laughs> and soon ready to battle the minions of hell in Diablo 4, the brave souls of Sanctuary. Yeah! It feels really great to be able to say the words Diablo 4 out loud. <laughs> we use code names when we're working on the game, and we train ourselves not to reference the real name and so when we're able to kind of come out and finally say Diablo 4, it feels a bit wicked. Diablo 4. We've actually had Diablo 4 in development for some time. You know, when we come before you, we want to ensure that when we reveal Diablo to you, that we can give you a good look at the dark vision of Sanctuary, along with a playable experience here at BlizzCon. You know, I've personally spent a lot of time of playing Diablo over the years, and a lot of love has gone into this game, and I really hope everyone enjoys it. So let's talk about what else is here for us at BlizzCon, our Baker's Dozen BlizzCon, lucky number 13. We see BlizzCon as the place where the Blizzard community can have a home away from home, it's our home, too, because many of us have grown up playing Blizzard games. We've forged lifelong friendships. We've made memories. And we've also had a lot of fun over the last 28 years. This year, for the very first time, we've set up something to honor that legacy and celebrate the beginning of what's made Blizzard great. Celebrate the games and the communities that we have. We're excited Mike to off. debut the Blizzard Arcade in Hall E. The Blizzard Arcade has an old school arcade vibe. Gather there with friends, play some games, and experience some of the earliest things that Blizzard has ever made. For the very first time at BlizzCon, we have rock and roll racing. Blackthorn, and the Lost Vikings. If you've never experienced these games before, or if you have and you want to relive the magic, then the arcade is a great place to hang out. Joey Ray's Bar, as well as the Slaughtered Calf Inn are there, so you're welcome to kick back, relax, and enjoy. But the arcade isn't just a celebration of where we've come from. 
It's also a showcase of some of our new announcements. Let's talk about StarCraft II. If you're a StarCraft fan, we have two exciting things for you in the arcade. For several years, we've been working with Google and the DeepMind Artificial Intelligence Project. The DeepMind group has taught agents how to play the game as part of their AI research. And I'm excited to say that for the very first time, players are going to be able to pit themselves against DeepMind AI agents right here on the show floor. We have a master, we have master level agents. We have a diamond level agent. And just a quick note that if you try this, you, you will not win. <laughs> Three of you will win. I, I won't win. For StarCraft II fans, we've also been really hard at work on bringing an iconic villain to life. I'm excited to announce that the leader of the Sons of Korhal and the ruler of the Terran Dominion, Arturus Mansk, is coming to the game later this month as the next co-op commander. <laughs> Manx is unlike any commander that you've ever played, and at BlizzCon, he's loaded up and ready for you in the arcade. Let's talk Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> for Heroes fans, the team has brought Deathwing the Destroyer into the Nexus. Deathwing is actually the most requested hero of all time, and we're excited for you to have an opportunity to play. Deathwing actually has two forms with two different sets of abilities, bringing the iconic World Breaker fantasy to life. And Deathwing is playable here for the very first time in the Blizzard Arcade. In addition, everyone with a BlizzCon or virtual ticket will automatically receive Deathwing when he enters the Nexus. Yes, yes! One more thing to talk about with, uh, with heroes, and it's that in celebration of BlizzCon, all heroes are free from now until November 10th. So if you've ever wanted to jump in and play, now's a great time. We have one other thing in the, one of a real-time strategy game in the Blizzard Arcade for you. It is called Warcraft 3 Reforged. <laughs> we recently started the beta, and we're ready to expand the pool of testers. So everyone here, everyone watching with a virtual ticket, you'll all have beta access to Warcraft 3 Reforged starting Tuesday. And we'll, announce, and we'll announce the release date for Warcraft 3 Reforged soon. <laughs> this month is an important one in Warcraft history because we are celebrating both the 25-year anniversary of Warcraft and the 15-year anniversary of World of Warcraft. Yeah. We kicked off that celebration two months ago with the launch of WoW Classic. And we've been excited to welcome back millions of players to Azeroth. It's been a really amazing experience to, ex to see the beginning of the game all over again. You know, many of you uh, I've heard cursing your limited bag space. <laughs> many of you are experiencing Baron's chat, maybe for the first time. And some of you have even gone back to feed your hunter pets. <laughs> it's part of that anniversary celebration. And in remembrance that for some of you, your favorite flavor is vanilla. We have vanilla ice cream for sale in the WoW concessions area. <laughs> you think that you want this. And I think maybe that you do. BlizzCon isn't just a celebration of our games, it's also a celebration of the players who play them. And here you can see some of the most skilled pro players compete in our games. 
I want to thank everyone out there for giving your energy and your support to your favorite teams and favorite players. About a month ago, we held the grand finals for the Overwatch League in Philadelphia. Congratulations to the San Francisco Shock and 2019 MVP Sinatra. Next season, the league is moving to a home and away format. And that means there's competition taking place in 20 cities all around the world. And this is the very first time that something like this has been done in esports. And so it is a great time to be a fan of the Overwatch League, and it's a great time to love Overwatch. At BlizzCon this weekend, the best of the best are going to battle it out in the Overwatch World Cup, featuring more than 30 country-based teams from all around the world. We'll also be celebrating champions and crowning champions for StarCraft II World Championship Series, the Hearthstone Grand Masters, the WoW Arena World Championships, the WoW Mythic Dungeon International Tournaments. BlizzCon has been home to some great moments in esports history, and we're excited to watch the action unfold over the next two days. This weekend just an, isn't just about celebrating our pro players. It's also celebrating with you, the Blizzard community. One of the highlights of the show is our community night contest. And for me, that's actually my personal favorite of the show. I am pleased to announce that Darren DePaul, voice of Reinhardt, among other famous Blizzard characters, has returned to host. This is one of the places where you really see the vibrant and creative gaming community that is Blizzard and is BlizzCon come to life. Um, and we're really excited about the talent that everyone demonstrates. All right. In closing, I just want to say there's a lot of people out there uh, that are Blizzard employees, and they're there in the crowd. And the reason that all of us are here is you. We're here to celebrate this moment with you. You know, we, look, we really look forward to this weekend. This is a highlight for us all year to come together and to celebrate all the passion of Blizzard games. And so, for all of you watching, we are grateful. Thank you for being here with us. BlizzCon, be good to one another. Welcome home. Please welcome Game Director of World of Warcraft, Ian Hazakostis. Hello, BlizzCon! I am so honored and humbled to be up here with all of you on behalf of World of Warcraft as it turns 15. This is a game that's been at the center of my life for every one of those 15 years. I think 15 years ago on this day, I think I was wandering around looking for stores that were still taking pre-orders of World of Warcraft so that I could jump in there on day one right with everyone else. And just over 11 years ago, I had the privilege of joining the development team to start to try to give back to this game and to this community that have given me so much. And here in this 15th anniversary year, it's been a great year for World of Warcraft. Just taking a look back, we kicked things off with the Battle of Dazar Alor, an alliance and horde going head to head in a raid zone for the very first time. Moved beneath the waves with our Rise of Ashara update. Along the way, we've seen the Kul Tiran join the alliance, and the Zandalari trolls bolster the ranks of the horde. And of course, we have Mechadomes and Volpera waiting in the wings to join them in our upcoming Visions of Nazoth update. And of course, just over two months ago, we launched this little game called World of Warcraft Classic. And as Jay said, it's been incredible watching millions return to Azeroth as it stood before the Cataclysm. Whether you are returning home to an old friend after a long time away, or experiencing it for the very first time, it's been an incredible journey, and here, on the 15th year of World of Warcraft, this community stands as strong as it ever has.
Speaking of Classic, I'm excited to announce that we have our next update to Classic just around the corner. In about a week and a half, the week of November 12th, we'll be enabling the world bosses, Zuragos and Kazakh, but most importantly, the PvP honor system. So if you still have any quests to finish up in Hillsbrad, I would recommend you get those done between now and then. Just a hunch. A couple of weeks ago, we released Dire Mall, and we have Dire Mall playable here on the show floor today. So grab some friends and check it out, or make some new ones. Speaking of the strength of the WoW community, I think one of the greatest sources of pride on our end as the development team is, is being able to work with the community and harness the power of this incredible community in support of some incredible charitable causes. This year, I'm happy to announce that we're working with not one, but two different charities that both work on behalf of children around the world. The first is the Make-A-Wish Foundation, an incredible group that tries to grant wishes to critically ill kids. And honestly, we've had the pleasure of working closely with them over the years. I want to give a shout out to an inspiring young woman named Amara who visited us and who we worked with just a couple months ago. The second organization is we.org, which works to provide food, water, shelter, educational opportunities, and more to children in need around the world. So next month, I'm happy to announce and introduce a pet that's going on sale, the adorable Dottie, the baby alpaca. So, so if you thought that Dolly and Dot were your best friends, wait till you meet Dottie. Uh, she'll be worming your way into hearts everywhere in early December, and all proceeds from sales of Dottie from then through the end of the year go to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation and we.org. Back in Battle for Azeroth, the year's not quite over. We have this 15th anniversary celebration that's just around the corner, and I mean just around the corner. This coming Tuesday, November 5th, we will be enabling all the 15th anniversary events in-game. So first off, that is a throwback battleground, Korax Revenge, inspired by the original Alterac Valley. So dig in, get ready to storm that bridge as you push your way into Stormpike. And next, we have a set of throwback raid experiences, inspired by some of the greatest raid encounters of the early days of WoW, from Kael Thos through the Lich King. Players who complete all three of those experiences will be able to earn their very own Obsidian Worldbreaker mount, inspired by Deathwing. And everyone who logs in during the two-month celebration will get their own little little Lefarian pet. Now, for those of you here in attendance at BlizzCon in person, we have a second 15th anniversary celebration in store for you. Please join us tonight at 8.30 outside the Arena Plaza for a toast and a celebration with the World of Warcraft team. A toast to 15 years of Warcraft, of World of Warcraft, 25 years of Warcraft, and to the best that is yet to come. Now, as fun as it's been reflecting on the last 15 years and this past year in World of Warcraft, we all know that the most exciting part of BlizzCon every year is getting to hear and to talk about what's coming next. And so that raises the question, really, where, where would we go from here? What is next in store for Azeroth? I mean, it's, you know, as we stand right now, the Horde and the Alliance are perched on the edge of a tenuous armistice, finally putting an end to the battle for Azeroth that has ravaged their world. And yes, the forces of Nizoth and his old god minions are looming, but I've seen some pretty reliable data mine spoilers that suggest that we're going to come out on top in this one. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. And so after, you know, really what's been a rough few years for Azeroth between the assault of the Iron Horde and the Burning Legion and everything that's gone on since, I think things might finally be looking up for Azeroth. You know, I mean, you know, it's, all these threats have been taken care of. 
just sunny days and clear skies ahead. I mean, personally, I, I can't think of any unaccounted for loose ends or anyone who might be lurking in the shadows, thirsting for revenge. Can you? Ice crown. A monument to our suffering. The veil between life and death. Where a usurper sits on a frozen throne. But no king rules forever.
So now do the blue eyes make sense? <laughs> so yeah, that just happened. Uh, we were once told by King Terranus that there must always be a Lich King. And now for the first time, there is none. Sylvanas herself warned us that in the end, death claims us all. Well, death is coming for us. And if we want to stand a chance, we are going to have to go where no living soul ever has. We are going to the Shadowlands, the world that is the afterlife for the entire Warcraft universe. Now, along the way, we will get a chance to meet some of the fallen and learn their fates. But this is not a familiar world full of orcs and trolls and dwarves. This is an ancient and mysterious realm that predates the Titans themselves. It is the source of the power of the Scourge that we have seen, true, and it's the power upon which Death Knights draw. But it's also the origin of the noble Valkyr and the spirit healers that guide us back to the land of the living when we pull a couple mobs too many. Not that anyone's ever done that. <laughs> it's where spirits of nature go to begin a cycle of rest and rebirth, and so much more. Let's take a look at this wondrous world that we are set to explore. The Jailer of the Damned. A grim task, which I have failed. Now the eternal veil screams, torn asunder by her. Within the realm of shadow lies the darkest of terrors, which should never be set free. The Shadowlands are infinite. Their terrors and beauty were never meant for mortal eyes. I wonder if they can bear to behold all that awaits them. So World of Warcraft Shadowlands is coming next year, and it will be available for pre-purchase today. That is just a little glimpse of this incredible world that awaits us. Ahead of us lie many fateful decisions, because at its core, Shadowlands is an expansion that is built around the idea of choice. Agency and self-expression, in the rewards you pursue, and in the allies with whom you cast your lot. I know you have a ton of questions, like what the heck is a covenant? What is that tower that's sticking out of the sky above Ice Crown? What other changes are coming to World of Warcraft? And so much more. So we have our first panel for you at 2.30 on the Mythic stage, the World of Warcraft What's Next panel, where we'll dig into that and much, much more. Also playable here on the show floor, we invite you to journey into the zone of Bastion and to begin to explore the Shadowlands. Thank you all so much, and it's going to be an incredible weekend ahead. I can't wait to share it with all of you.
And now, it's my pleasure to turn things over to Ben Thompson on the Hearthstone team.